Monsieur le Président, dis Mr. President, distinguished members of the Council, I am grateful for the opportunity that I have this afternoon to give you a briefing about the situation in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and particularly about the latest developments with regard to the electoral process that is ongoing and the implementation of the agreement of the 31st of December 2016. The calendar for the forthcoming presidential and legislative elections at a national and provincial level is tightening, given that we are now nine days from the beginning of the official campaign and less than six weeks from the date for voting, which is the, 30, the 23rd of December. I would like to note that in spite of the persistence of some discord, particularly with regard to the use of the voting machines and the reliability of the electoral register, all stakeholders remain resolutely committed to the electoral process. The main opposition candidates for the presidential elections met on Sunday in Geneva and agreed on one candidate. After a meeting of three days, facilitated by the Kofi Annan Foundation, they designated Martin Fayoulou to represent them in the context of a new coalition, which is called Lamuka, which in Lingala means wake up. The coalition announced the forthcoming organization of a meeting in Kinshasa so that they could present the common opposition candidate as well as the common program and the main focuses of the campaign. The choice of Martin Fayoulou as the only opposition candidate nevertheless has led to some disputes among the militants of the UDPS and the UNC. As a result of this, the leaders of the two groups announced that they would withdraw from the agreement signed the day before. The Common Front for Congo has just presented the team which will support the campaign for its candidate, Emmanuel Ramazani Shadari, whose program should be unveiled on the 15th of November. Furthermore, at the same time, preparations for the vote are continuing. On the 31st of October, President Joseph Kavila presided over an inter-institutional meeting to assess the state of play of the electoral process. MONUSCO, as a partner organization, was invited to participate in this meeting. At the meeting, the government indicated that they had dispersed, up to the 23rd of October, $322.2 million to the Independent National Electoral Commission, which announced that it had received land and air transport means and was ready to deploy electoral material throughout the country within the necessary deadlines so as so that the vote could be held on the 23rd of December as foreseen. Furthermore, the training of roughly 600,000 members of the electoral staff, as had been announced by CENI, is underway so that the operations in the 73,563 polling stations can go smoothly, spread out over 23,000 sites. While the process for accrediting witnesses, observers and journalists has begun, civil society organizations in the DRC have announced their intention to deploy on the ground thousands of observers so as to grant, guarantee transparency and credibility in the electoral process. The Southern African Development Community also expressed its wish to deploy an electoral obs observation mission. This commitment at a regional level was then reinforced by two high-level visits last year, it visits to Kinshasa. On the one hand, the Electoral Consultative Council of SADC, and on the other hand, the Commissioner for Peace and Security from the African Union. President, distinguished members of the Council. So as to provide its contribution 
for the holding of peaceful elections, the platform for religious beliefs through its Commission of Integrity and Electoral Mediation has just organized a forum for peace and reconciliation. This aims to bring participants to sign a commitment to ensure the holding of peaceful, credible and transparent elections. Furthermore, the Congolese Episcopal Conference, SENCO, will hold its 57th plenary assembly from the 20th to the 22nd of November in Kinshasa. And the goal of that is also to assess the electoral process. In an interview recently given to the international press, the vice chair of SENCO and the new Archbishop of Kinshasa, Monsignor Fridola Ambongo, stressed the need to find a consensus on the issue of the voting machines so that they do not constitute a stumbling block for the holding of elections. In spite of this me momentum with regard to the holding of elections on the 23rd of December, the opposition is concerned about the dwindling political space, in particular the impossibility of holding meetings throughout the country and the non-equal access to public media. The opposition is also condemning what it be believes to be the presumed use of state resources for the benefit of the candidate of the Common Front for Congo. President, distinguished members of the Council. Progress still needs to be made towards the creation of a propitious environment for the holding of credible elections. And it is precisely in this viewpoint that I am sparing no effort within the context of my good offices. I have begun meetings with all candidates for the presidential elections, and during all of my meetings, I stress the need to show tolerance and to show patriotic spirit, so to find a consensus uh, uh, with regard to the discord, so as not to miss the opportunity to make the elections of the 23rd of December a genuine success. I am also carrying out advocacy to the Congolese authorities so that freedom of, of expression and demonstration, which are the prerequisites for the establishment of democratic debate, are fully respected. Elections accepted by most Congolese men and women will mark a turning point in the history of the DRC by contributing to strengthening institutions and peace building and to achieve democratic, to ensure democratic achievements and sustainable development in the country. Which council members? In many parts of the country, these long-awaiting awaited elections will take place in a volatile security environment. Allow me to highlight several of our biggest concerns today. First, I have grown increasingly alarmed over the situation in Beni in recent months, where we continue to face major challenge in implementing our mandate. As I mentioned to you in my last briefing, civilians, the FRDC and MONUSCO alike are targeted by ADF and MAIMAI groups. Despite FRDC efforts, the mission's robust, robust patrolling and ongoing joint operations, the latest started yesterday, uh, these and still is still ongoing, these attacks continue and are taking place increasingly near the center of Beni Town. As you know, we are not only facing security challenges in Beni, but also supporting a major Ebola response effort. The recent visit of the Director General of WHO and the Under Secretary General of DPKO helped to underscore the commendable results that can be achieved through coordinated efforts. Teams from the Ministry of Health, World Health Organization, and other humanitarian partners are doing a remarkable job with MONUSCO's support. However, we are still seeing a growing number of cases 
in the major population centers of Beni and Bethembo, and significant community resistance to response effort. Women are disproportionately affected, representing about 60% of all probable and confirmed cases. Due to a number of factors, including their roles as caregivers of the deceased, the mission will continue its support to Ebola efforts as a matter of utmost priority, also taking into account a gendered response lens. Our teams on the ground are providing extensive logistical and protection support to partners and are engaging with local authorities and communities to encourage their acceptance of response efforts. Second, there is a potential for armed group interference in elections in specific areas through Good Eastern DRC, particularly in Tanganyika, South Kivu, and the Grand and Petit Nord areas of North Kivu. Armed group violence in these key provinces could affect the secure deployment of electoral material and may prevent certain parts of the population from voting on election day, thus impacting the inclusivity of the process. It will be especially important for the government to take steps in the coming weeks to secure polls, particularly to ensure the participation of women who make up 50% of registered voters. Third, we are also carefully watching the situation in the Kasais, following the forced return of Congolese migrant from Angola. Given the pace of returns, the limited capacity to receive returnees on the ground and the difficulties they face in returning home, there is the possibility for ethnic tension to flare up in certain areas of the Kasais. Despite the remoteness of the area in which the mission has a very limited footprint, MONUSCO has been providing support to humanitarian partners and engaging with Congolese and regional actors to advocate for a more measured pace of return. Mr. President, distinguished council members, it is in this dynamic context that we move forward long-awaited elections in just over one month's time. Our collective focus must now be on ensuring the credibility of the process. It is of paramount importance that candidates have equal access to political space during the campaign period and that restrictions on peaceful demonstrations are lifted consistently throughout the country. Further progress in the implementation of confidence building measures and the existence of a level political playing field throughout the campaign period leading up to 23rd December will significantly enhance the credibility of polls and contribute to post-electoral stability. I will continue to advocate with all parties in this regard, and I count on you, distinguished members of the Council, to support our efforts and to convey the same messages in the coming weeks. Je vous remercie. Thank you for your attention.